So let's look at percent yield. The equation for percent yield is actual yield over theoretical yield times 100. Now the actual re yield is what you really get in the reaction. Or in a Brook problem, it has to be given to you. Because of whatever goes on, maybe the reaction isn't complete, maybe um, you can't isolate all the product, you don't always get as much as you predict you will. So that's what the actual yield is, what you actually get. The theoretical yield is what you calculate you could get in a reaction based on the starting amounts. So this is the calculated amount. So theoretical is calculated, the actual is given. So let's try a problem with that. So what is the percent yield if 15.0 grams of aluminum oxide are produced from 10 grams of aluminum? Okay, this has a lot of information and it might be a little tricky to sort out what am I supposed to start with, what am I looking for? So let's do a given and a find. We're really given two numbers. We're given 15.0 grams of aluminum oxide, and we're given 10.0 grams of aluminum. And what we're trying to find is percent yield. Now that's not as helpful as a unit. And so here we've got to think about well, what do you think yield is? What are they talking about? What compound is the yield? Well, the yield is going to be the product. So you're really looking for aluminum oxide. So this is equal to actual over theoretical times 100. Now, one of those you're given. Okay, and you can tell because aluminum oxide is our, our yield, this one right here, that is your actual yield. So that's where the 15 grams is going in the numerator there. The theoretical is what we're going to calculate. And we're going to calculate it based on the mass of the aluminum. So to find the theoretical yield, we're going to start with this number and calculate how much aluminum oxide. So starting with 10.0 grams of aluminum, okay, first thing we do is change it to moles. So um, the periodic table says there's 26.98 grams of aluminum per one mole of aluminum. Okay, next is the mole ratio. We're going to have four moles of aluminum on the bottom based on that four. And what we're trying to find is the aluminum oxide, two moles Al2O3. Okay, so our grams aluminum cancel, the moles aluminum cancel, and now we need the molar mass. And we found that by adding up the aluminum, the oxygen, and we did that on the previous slide, it was 101.96 grams of Al2O3 per one mole of Al2O3. Okay, so the moles cancel, and this will give us our theoretical yield. So going to the calculator, 10 divided by 26.98 divided by 2, simplifying that, times 101.96, and I get 18.895, um, let's call that 18.9 grams of Al2O3. So now we're ready to do our percent yield. It's the actual, the 15, 15.0 15 grams, divided by the theoretical, the 18.9 grams, times 100. Just plugging it into this formula that's given. And so we have 15 divided by 18.9 um, times 100, that is 79.4%. The 
And there it is written a little more neatly. Sometimes you know the amount of both your reactants. And in this case, you'll have a limiting reactant problem. So I want to start describing it in some simple scenarios that, are, that you'll be able to really understand, like making a sandwich. So let's say you were making a sandwich. In each sandwich, you're going to use two slices of bread, three pieces of lunch meat, and one slice of cheese. So you're making sandwiches, and here's what you actually have. You have six slices of bread, 12 pieces of lunch meat, and five slices of cheese. Well, how many sandwiches you can, make, can you make? You're going to run out of one of these things first, and you'll be done making sandwiches. So the best way to figure this out, besides just making the sandwich, is to identify how many of the product, how many sandwiches will this make? So six slices of bread. If each sandwich takes two, you can see that would make three sandwiches. All right, 12 slices of lunch meat. If there's three on each, this is going to make four sandwiches. And the five slices of cheese will make five, since there's only one on each sandwich. Okay, well, can we really make five sandwiches? No, we're going to run out of bread. So when we identify how much product each of our reactants or starting ingredients will make, then whichever makes the smallest, that's how many sandwiches we can make. So three, that's our smallest number. That's why we call the bread the limiting reactant. It's going to run out first. It's going to determine how many sandwiches we can make. And you can see, we can make three sandwiches. Now our bread's gone. We still have three pieces of lunch meat left over and five slices, of, uh, sorry, two slices of cheese left over. So we have leftovers of the other, but the limiting reactant's the one that made the least. And how many sandwiches it made, that's our theoretical yield. That's how many sandwiches we can make. So let's look at this in terms of molecules. So consider this um, scenario. What if we had four molecules of hydrogen and three molecules of oxygen, and we wanted to make water? Four molecules of hydrogen, each one of these can make a water. So this will make four waters. Each oxygen will make a water. And so since we have six, this will make six waters. And so again, we can't really make six waters. We don't have enough hydrogen. Our limiting reactant is the hydrogen. And how much water we can make is four. And you can see we have leftover oxygen because we couldn't use it all. We ran out. So that's the idea behind limiting reactant. Let's apply it to a mole-mole problem. Remember the mole-mole problems are the easy ones because we don't have to do gram conversions. But let's see how this works. So the question is, how many moles of NH3 can be produced from two moles of N2 and three moles of H2? And the balanced reaction is given here. I'm going to start by writing what we have. So the nitrogen, we have two moles. The hydrogen, we have three moles. And the question is, how many moles of ammonia can we make? Whenever you have a limiting re re reactant problem, you have to solve it twice. So we're going to solve it with the nitrogen, we're going to solve it with the hydrogen, and we're going to take the smaller answer. So start solving it with the nitrogen. We had two moles of nitrogen. Our only conversion we need is the mole ratio. So we have one mole nitrogen on the bottom, because there's a one in front of it in the balanced reaction, to two moles of NH3 on the top. And that gives us four moles of NH3. That's how much product the nitrogen will make. Now we solve it with the hydrogen. So now we're going to start with three moles hydrogen. So notice this one, we started with one of our givens. And then our other given is a separate calculation. Don't try and put them both in the same calculation. 
So starting with three moles of hydrogen, we're going to put three moles hydrogen on the bottom. Okay, the three was given, the three is in the reaction. So this three here corresponds to the one in the reaction. And then two moles of NH3, again, from the reaction, the two right there. The mole ratio always comes from that reaction. And so that gives us two moles of NH3. So remember, we're going to choose the smaller one. We can't really make the four moles. We don't have enough hydrogen for that. What we can make is two moles. And so this is called our theoretical yield. And our limiting reactant is the reactant that made the smallest, and that is hydrogen. Okay, so that is a mole-mole limiting reactant problem. Here it is typed out. We can also do this with a gram-to-gram -gram problem. It's just, just a few more steps, but the process is exactly the same. We're going to solve it twice and take the smallest answer. So let's look at this. What is the percent yield? Look at that. We're combining percent yield and limiting reactant. It's all going to be in this problem. So what is the percent yield if 15 grams of aluminum oxide are produced from 10 grams of aluminum and 9.51 grams of oxygen? So let's write these things under the reaction. So we know we have 15.0 grams here, okay? And we know we have 10 grams here and 9.51 grams here. So one thing to notice is that we're given both the reactants. And that's why I have them listed out. We're going to solve it with aluminum. We're going to solve it with oxygen. Anytime you're given both your reactants, you solve it twice. Now, why were we given the product? That's a bit of a mixed mystery. But what that is, remember our percent yield is actual over theoretical. times 100. This number right here is our actual yield. So we'll just hold on to it and use it at the end. So that's going into the theoretical yield. Let's solve the problem first with the 10 grams, 10.0 grams of aluminum. And remember the three steps. First thing we got to do is change grams to moles. Get the number off the periodic table, 26.98 grams of aluminum for one mole of aluminum. Okay, so that's our first step, change to moles. Next step is the mole ratio. Four moles aluminum to two moles Al2O3. Okay, remember four moles, that's our given. Two moles, that's what we're trying to find. So moles of aluminum cancel. And our last step is the molar mass, the 101.96 that we added up previously, grams of Al2O3. And that's just adding up two aluminums, three oxygens, per one mole Al2O3. And the moles of Al2O3 cancel. Now I go to my calculator. Um, so I have 10 divided by 26.96 divided by 2 times 101.96 equals, um, and then keeping three figures, I've got 18.9 grams of Al2O3. So that might be my theoretical yield, but I don't know until I calculate with oxygen as well. So now I go to the oxygen, starting with 9.51 grams of oxygen. And the same three steps, I'm going to start by dividing by the molar mass. 32.00 grams of O2 per one mole of O2. Okay, and then that cancels my grams of O2. 
Now I need my mole ratio. So oxygen has a 3, 3 moles O2. And again, I'm going to the aluminum oxide, 2 moles Al2O3. The moles of oxygen cancel, and now I go to grams. 101.96 grams of Al2O3 per 1 mole Al2O3. And the moles cancel, and we get a number. 9.51 divided by 32 times 2 divided by 3 times 101.96 and that gives me 20.2 grams of Al2O3. So there's our two answers. Which one do we keep? We keep the smallest one. This number right here is our theoretical yield. And I like to just cross that one out because you might be tempted to use that as your actual yield or use it as something. You, you can't use it. You didn't have enough of the aluminum to make that much product. Another thing to point out is even though we started with less of the oxygen, that didn't make it the limiting reactant. It's not the one you have least of. It's the one that produces the smallest amount of product. So now we can go to percent yield. Remember, it's actual over theoretical, so our actual is given the 15.0 grams of Al2O3 given in the original problem statement. The actual always has to be given divided by the theoretical, that's the one we calculated, that was the smallest, 18.9 grams of Al2O3 times 100. All right, and that gives us... Um, 15 divided by 18.9 times 100, 79.4 percent. And that is our percent yield that the question asked for. Um, the other thing that we know is our limiting reactant is the aluminum. You didn't ask that, but you know that. Limiting reactant. Is one. So that puts it all together in one problem. And here it is typed out a little bit more neatly and some other examples for you to try from the book. So here's what you need to know from chapter 8. Use the balance reaction to calculate moles of product from moles of reactant. That's the mole-mole problem. Calculate grams, moles, or number of the product from grams, moles, or number of the reactant. That's basically the gram-gram problem, but it doesn't have to be that tight. Some could be moles or number of atoms. You can do all of those. Determine the limiting reactant and theoretical yield in a mole-to-mole -mole problem or a gram-to-gram -gram problem. And calculate percent yield given the actual yield.